Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Michael and All Angels. We want to invite you to go to stmichael.org slash live and download the bulletin so you can join us in the Eucharist today. And we ask that you would stand wherever you are and take that bulletin. And let's sing these words, O oh, love that will not let me go. Hello and welcome. We're glad that you're joining us um, for worship. May this be a hallowed and blessed time as we draw near to God. Let's begin our spoken liturgy. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things that surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. 
What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the, de that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for saving me. What can I say? You are my everything. I will sing your praise. You shed your blood for me. What can I say? You took my sin and shame, a sinner called by name. Grave is the Please stand for the reading of the gospel. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> During my days as an undergraduate in College Station, the campus would occasionally be visited by this strange, peculiar, and very fiery speaker, um, yelling as much as he could, as loud as he could, at as many people as he could. This particular man claimed that since he had accepted Jesus into his life, he had never, not once, committed a sin. And that anyone who didn't have the same type of relationship that he claimed to have with Jesus was going to hell. You can imagine this went over really well with college students. Because I grew up in Episcopal churches, and I knew about God's love, but had not at that time encountered such judgment from one who professed to follow Jesus. His speeches and attitude did not have a positive impact at all. Many other Christian groups would come and set up nearby and would pray and offer a more loving version of Christianity, but there was such animosity flung about that this was not an effective way to evangelize. Today we're blessed to hear from the Acts of the Apostles a much different and more helpful way to share our faith in the loving God. What Paul does in Acts chapter 17 is that he spends time with people in their own culture. He observes what's important to the people. He builds relationships with them, and then he proclaims the good news of God in Christ. Paul effectively tells the story of Jesus in a way that is relevant to the Athenians. He doesn't start with Moses and then go through all the prophets like you might have if you were talking with people of a Jewish background. He doesn't even spend that much time talking about Jesus' miracles or teachings. He looks at what they know and goes from there, and he starts with a compliment. As Paul looks out into the Areopagus, which is also known as Mars Hill, he sees how the Athenians are searching for the divine and notes how religious they are. Today, many of us live among family, friends, and neighbors who claim to be spiritual but not religious, and our task is similar to Paul's. Like Paul, after taking time to get to know a person's experiences and perspectives, we might say something like this to them, I see that you are really seeking spiritual depth in your life. Let me tell you how a relationship with God, the creator of all things through Jesus Christ, can fulfill your spiritual search. We find in Paul's preaching a very hopeful and applicable example of how evangelism can successfully be accomplished. Now, if you're paying attention, you know I had a little fun with the title of my sermon today. The place where Paul engages in this incredible evangelism, the Areopagus, is also known as Mars Hill. So Paul is showing the Athenians how to discover the one true God on Mars. We don't have to wait for NASA, it's already been done. John Gray in 1992 wrote this very popular book which sold 15 million copies, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. And in the book, 
Gray makes a case that one of the main difficulties in relationships between women and men is because of fundamental psychological differences. And one of the best known examples, and I would argue most widely experienced (laughs) example of this, is when a woman shares an issue or a challenge that she's having with a man, and the man's immediate response is to try to fix the problem when the woman might really just want to be listened to and heard empathetically. Now, I'm not here to criticize what that book has to say, though a lot of criticism can be found. Rather, I want to celebrate that there are differences in the genders, as well as celebrate that all genders contribute to who we are as human beings. By me claiming that men can find God on Mars and women can find God on Venus, I don't mean that men cannot find God on Venus, nor do I mean that women cannot find God on Mars. What I mean is that there are differences between women and men, and God can and God does use those differences to communicate God's very self to humans. After all, we are created in the image of God, the imago dei, both genderless and containing all genders. We hear God speak in the first chapter of the book of the Bible, Genesis. Let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness. So God created humankind in God's own image. and the image of God, they were created male and female. He created them. From the differences between women and men to the beauty and wonder and the complexity of life in this world, to the planets like Mars and Venus, both of which we can see from this earth, to the vast expanse of interstellar space, there exist countless icons of God's love and provision. An icon is simply something we look at or look through in order to see and experience God. So what Paul is doing for the Athenians is showing them that one of these icons is already known to them, and how it communicates the truth of Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, where do you see and experience our loving God? Paul notes also in this passage from Acts that for a long period of time, God overlooked human ignorance. And while there had been multiple and numerous signs and prophets and writings and events that have communicated God's self to humanity, most people have missed who God is and what God is about. So Paul articulates that in Jesus, God has fully communicated to humanity who God is and how we ought to be in relationship with God and with each other. In our gospel today, as Jesus prepares his followers for his ascent into heaven, he reminds us that just as the Father is in him, he is in us. We Christians, we followers of Jesus, are now the icons for this broken world. We are the messengers of how all of humanity was created to be in life-giving relationship with God and with each other. You and I represent God to the world in the same way that Paul was able to use what was known to the Athenians. We can use what we know and especially who we know in Christ, to show others what a life of faith can be. It can be a life of joy, of hope, of peace. Now, there's no doubt we're living in uncertain times. Recently, a a member of this parish, Ruth Mason, was kind enough to share a quote with me from Brene Brown, and I think it applies to what we've been talking about today. Brene says this, we will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal, other than that we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return, my friends. We are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. 
You see, my brothers and sisters, in our pre-coronavirus days, we may have thought to seek God in this church building. And surely God is present in this place. But God is present in all places and in all people. If only we have the eyes to see. We have the opportunity just now to seek new icons of God's love and presence. And we have the opportunity just now to be new icons of God's justice and peace in the world. Just as Paul noted all of those years ago, people are searching for God and perhaps groping for him and will find him. For indeed, God is not far from any of us. For in him, we live and move and have our being. So how might each one of us this week participate in at least one conversation with someone about our faith. Even if we don't know all there is to know about the biblical narrative, we do know the important parts of God's story, and we know our own experience of faith. My encouragement to you as you share a conversation about your faith with someone could be a little scary, but just remember all the different reactions that Paul faced in his teaching to the Athenians. The reactions were mixed. Some people mocked him for proclaiming that Jesus rose from the dead. Some agreed to hear him again, and some joined him and became believers. We might expect and hope for a similar response. Paul was most likely the most successful evangelist to date, but rather than being intimidated by his example, we should be inspired by his love for all people, especially for those who do not yet know the love of Christ. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you reveal yourself to us and the ways we differ from each other and in our unity being created in your image. Help us to find you in new ways that our faith and hope may be strengthened. Let your light so shine through each one of us that we become a beacon, an icon, that draws all people to your love and grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Joining with Christians through the ages and around the world today, I invite you to stand as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. 
Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your, to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we lift up all those who are working on the front lines to fight the virus, for all the healthcare workers, for all the different people that are helping with essential services, for all of us as we continue to lean into a new way of living. Pray for all those who are experiencing job insecurity or who've experienced unemployment because of what's going on. We pray that you would give peace and strength and you would help lead the way. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Again, welcome. We're so glad that you are joining us uh, for the service today, and we continue to pray for you as we live out these new lives and roles and ways of doing things today. Um, it was a good week for me. I got a small trim this week. I won't say how it happened, but I got one. But um, So I've told her not to take much off the bangs because Justin and I are still having the, the great bang grow off, and we're headed towards some 80s rock music where we're going to flip them later down the road, but you know. We've given up on the back because uh, Eric has got his beat on that one. So uh, anyway, but glad that you're with us. I want to make just a few announcements and reminders. Um, first of all, I want to remind you of all the content that we've put up on the web um, for you to continue to grow and experience things from our Easter podcast to different offerings we have at the church. I encourage you to go to our website and go explore the many ways that you can engage in formation and grow. I want to mention one of those also that's going to be coming up starting in June. It'll be live. But we'll be doing our pub theology that we do on Monday nights, the first four Mondays in June at 6.30. We'll be doing those live, and we're going to have a way worked out. It's going to be live streamed. I'm not exactly sure where we're going to be broadcasting from, but it'll be live streamed. And we will be taking questions. If you've done it with us in the past, the format will allow for questions to come in um, before Q&A at the end of the talk, and we'll be doing that um, as well during, the, during our time. So I encourage you to p make plans to join us. If you downloaded the bulletin today, you'll see the topics and our speakers, and we're excited about the lineup that we have coming up this year. I also want to make the announcement, the ongoing announcement, that we are um, continuing to lean into ministry in many ways. And it's kind of encouraging because we're not only um, doing ministry locally, but we, it's encouraging to see the way that ministry is taking place really around the world um, from this website. And so I really want to thank you for the way you've been giving and encourage you to continue to give. You can text um, to the number that we have on the screen 
and it'll prompt you for how to give. If you've already done it, then it becomes easy, but if it's your first time, it'll ask you for some information. And we encourage you to keep giving as we continue to um, try to minister during this time. We come now to a time of Holy Communion, and um, we're all spread out in different kinds of ways, but I just want to remind you and invite you to continue to stay with us as we hear these words of Jesus spoke on the night that, um, before he died, and as we receive in a spiritual sense, as the um, elements are held up, I want to encourage you to stay with us and to partake of that in this spiritual moment. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. the congregation wherever you are to be seated as we continue in prayer holy and gracious father in your infinite love you made us for yourself when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you in your mercy sent jesus christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the god and father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity and constancy and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to sing. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a king. The power, the glory forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I 
see the face to face you would I touch and handle things I see here grass with fur the hand eternal grace and all my upon the here would I feed upon the bread drink with me the royal wine of heaven. Here would I lay aside each earthly lord. Here taste afresh the calm of sin the sin but thine the righteousness mine is the guilt but thine the cleansing blood here is my robe my refuge and my Having received spiritually, invite you to join together in prayer as we say, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's sing together the last verse of love that will not let me go. Oh, love that will not let me go. Last verse. I dare not, dare not ask to fly from me. I lay in the life's glory dead, and from the ground there blossoms red. Like that shall endless be. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.